My name is Erin Olaf and I'm a photographer. I'm born in Hilversum. I lived there the first eight years of my life. It's a small village in, in the Netherlands. I'm the middle of three kids, two brothers. My father was uh, not interested in arts at all. And my mother was uh, interested, but without any knowledge. But they always supported me as uh, I started to photograph. They paid my first camera and they never uh, objected to uh, subjects I was photographing. In my childhood, there was one thing I was doing, it was fantasizing. So I made up my, whole, my own stories, my own world, even had an imaginary dog. One day my father was thinking, uh, came home and I was really angry with him because he was stepping on my dog. <laughs> So, but and photography, the, the, the kind of photography I'm doing is very close, uh, let's say, to realizing your fantasies. It doesn't have any, anything to do on the first sight with reality. So I always lived in my dream world. When I was uh, 13 years old, uh, I was watching um, together with my mother on the couch you had a teenage program uh, with music, it, only one hour a week. It was in uh, the top 40 or something like that. And that was for, for the first time I saw a role model. And that was David Bowie performing uh, the Gene Genie. I was really paralyzed on the couch, you know, also because I was 13, 14, struggling with my uh, sexuality and identity. And here was somebody who was looking and acting like I wanted to be. So for about 10, 15 years, I was a huge David Bowie fan. And I wanted to become an actor uh, when I was young, but because of the fantasy world, but uh, I didn't dare to, uh, to say to the, the because our uh, gymnastics teacher, he was also the dean, you know, and with the dean, you had to decide what to do in the, in the future, but because he was, so machismo, you know, he said, uh, I didn't dare to say, so he, then he said, uh, he said, what do you want to become? And he said, I don't know, you know, and then he said, well, you write uh, quite nice. So here's a school of journalism, let's go, uh, you go there. So I was reading the booklet and it was saying, uh, I had to leave my parents home because it was better for your, uh, your independence as a journalist, blah, blah, and I wrote, ah, I can leave home, you know. <laughs> So that was the reason. <laughs> that was not really... And then I was in the school and then I found out within a mo few months. Mm. My first encounter with art was when I was studying at school of journalism and I was buying the magazine, interview magazine, of uh, Andy Warhol. And from there on, you know, uh, I started to... Uh, and uh, started to, Because I, I like Bowie, he was singing The Gene Genie about Jean Genet. So I was going into that. You know, so it was, and then I met my first boyfriend and he was taking me, he was 10 years older and took me for the first time in my life to ballet, modern classical ballet of a very famous Dutch choreographer. And I was like, uh, again, you know, every time I was stupid fair, paralyzed and uh, I went to uh, Santa Pompidou. My first time I was hitchhiking for holidays. But there was at that moment, Eve Klein exhibition. So that was in a few years time I was absorbing a lot. Also the cinema, uh, very special, the, the Italian cinema like Visconti and Antonioni and Pasolini, Salo, you know, that was a slap in the face. And uh, Jacques Tati and the Spanish movement uh, in, and the Neue Deutsche Welle, the German, I had when I had so on the, and uh, fast being uh, so that was let's say the first amount of years let's say about six seven years after I left my parents home I saw a huge amount of art 